Hi, I'm Koya Webb, and welcome to the Lifestyle Design Podcast. I am so excited to really dive in deep and share with you the intention behind lifestyle design and how you can use the six areas of well-being to really live in alignment with your purpose. So this is going to be quick, but we're going to go really deep in a short amount of time because I want you to be able to refer back to this podcast episode whenever you're feeling low, whenever you're feeling down, and also every quarter to just check in with yourself. So the first area of well-being we're going to start with is spiritual well-being. I remember growing up, you know, in the church, singing in the choir, and I would have the Ten Commandments and my mom would make me recite the Ten Commandments every single day. And I had values that I followed and following these values helped me live in alignment with being a good person, which was most important to my parents. And now as I've gotten older and as my journey has twists and turns and I've developed an even closer relationship with God, I have identified the things in my life that help me really align with my faith, the things that keep me on track when I get distracted, things that have helped me be very well when it comes to spiritual well-being. And so I want you to rate yourself on from a level one to 10 on how you feel your spiritual well-being is now. So for me, some of the things that I do to enhance my spiritual well-being are uh, meditation, breath work, prayer, time in nature, and all of these things, writing down what I'm grateful for, help me develop a stronger relationship with the divine. And in that stronger relationship, when I feel like a lack of clarity, or if I feel like I'm going off course a little bit, all I have to do is pray, meditate, spend time in nature, write down what I'm grateful for, and things become more clear, right? And so how is your relationship? Um, when it comes to spiritual well-being, go ahead and rate yourself from one to 10. And now that I've gone through, you know, this life journey for 42 years as Koya, I realized that the more that I stay what I call divinely aligned and the more that I work on my spiritual well-being, the better I feel in whatever I do. And it is the most important for me, it is the most important area of well-being because it helps me be intentional about staying in alignment with my purpose. Not someone else's purpose, but my purpose. So give yourself uh, a number from one to 10. And again, this is something you can come back to at the end of the year. This is something you can come back to weekly, monthly, quarterly, However you check in, you do want to check in on a regular basis, especially if you're feeling lack of clarity or confusion. The next area of well-being is emotional well-being. Now, I love this area because I feel like it's often overlooked, but recently I feel like it's becoming normalized to talk about nervous system regulation and I'm in a neuroemotional coaching program and I feel like I'm learning so much, especially being an empath, which of course, I didn't know anything about being an empath. I didn't know what an HSP was. Like I had no idea. I just thought I was a very sensitive soul and I thought I felt a lot. I hate to see other people in pain and I had no idea why I was so quote unquote sensitive. But now understanding that having these sensitivities, which can sometimes feel like a curse. I remember the first time that someone else was crying and nothing was wrong with me and I started crying, you know, and I was like, oh my goodness, like this is feeling really intense. Like this thing happened to me on a deep level and I didn't know if anyone else felt things that deeply, but I was very concerned about it. As it continued to happen, people would say, oh, you're just sensitive, but that's it. I never knew how to manage this sensitivity. So after a while, taking on a lot of energy got really intense for me. And sometimes I would feel like I can't take anymore. And sometimes I would isolate myself. 
But now that I've gone through many trainings and that I have a toolkit of things to do to regulate my nervous system and things to do when I feel sensitive or when I feel overstimulated, I feel more balanced. I also have healthy boundaries so I can check out of certain situations that are overstimulating. So this really does help me in the emotional level. So right now, I would invite you to rate yourself and your emotional well-being, which means If you're like a one, that means I'm very emotional, I'm very triggered a lot, things people say and do, and just waking up in the world is triggering and frustrating. And a 10 would be, I'm emotional regulated, I can see things going on, I acknowledge the pain, the trauma, the things going on in the world, and I live in my truth and I can make decisions of where I wanna be in those situations without taking them personally. Okay, so rate yourself uh, from a one to 10 when it comes to emotional well-being. The next area of well-being is physical well-being. I have, thanks to my mom and dad, always been very physical. I feel like I was running out of the womb. And um, I remember when I was younger, my mom would create obstacle courses for us in the backyard. She would have us doing orange eating contests and she would always keep us very physical. And then as I got into middle school, I played basketball and I ended up running track in high school and I continued that throughout most of my college experience. But there was a time where I stopped being an athlete, but I was eating the same as I did when I was an athlete. And I felt like, okay, I'm kind of losing my myself and I don't feel as connected to my body and I'm not listening to my body. So where is your physical well-being? With a one being, uh, I don't care anything about my physical well-being. And it's not just how you look, but it's also your heart health. Do you feel like you're breathing deeply? Do you feel like your heart is healthy? Do you feel like your skin is healthy? Do you feel like all of these different areas on your body, do you have any pain or ailments in your body? Because your body does speak to you. And when things are out of balance energetically, you'll feel it in your body. And if things are out of balance for a long time, different organs can start to shut down. Um, different things in your mind can start to function different. And so where are you when it comes to physical well-being? Right now, I would say I'm probably at a nine, but I do have some um, health things um, as I'm journeying and into my fertility journey that I have become aware of um, that I'm working on um, when it comes to my womb space. Um, and it's okay. Like, again, and we're going through this, there's no judgment and there's no one size fits all when it comes to well-being. It's just tapping in with where you're at right now, acknowledging where you are right now and deciding which area you want to grow in. And we're not going to do all of them at the same time or you could do a little bit depending on where you are, but it really is just about saying and being honest about where you are. Um, and then if you want to work on any area, we'll talk about that at the end. So physical well-being. Next area of well-being we'll talk about is nutritional well-being. So nutritional well-being is really about what you're putting into your body, also what you're putting onto your skin. It also can go in physical or nutritional well-being because your skin is your biggest organ and you actually feed it with the skincare that you use. If you uh, wear makeup, the makeup that you put on, all of these things are impacting and all of them are are part of what you're taking in. So part of your nutritional well-being. So what foods are you eating? Are you eating foods that agree with your body, that give you energy, give you strength, make you feel good? Or are you eating a lot of things that you know your body does not like and does not function well on, but you're doing it anyway because you want to live a little? Again, it's not about perfection. It's just about being honest with yourself. Am I putting in a lot of things every day that I know is jacking up my system and making me feel bad, then you want to give yourself closer to a one. If you're like, every single thing I put in my mouth is perfect, (laughs) you want to give yourself a 10. I'm probably around an eight or nine in that area too. I eat mostly healthy, but I also love to travel and try all the vegan things. So I definitely eat some processed food in there. And, you know, every now and then I just do whatever I want. So I'll give myself like Like I said, probably more so a nine. I've been a little bit more conscious right now. So go ahead and rate yourself. Again, no judgment, but just give yourself a score. And the next area of well-being is social well-being. I remember there was a time when I was so focused 
on work that I let my social well-being fall. I was not living close to my family. I was in California, away from my family. I also had friends, but I didn't have any close relationships because I was working all the time. And mostly it was business interaction and there was no depth, right? I did have one friend, Nate the Great, which most of you who follow me for a while know. And that was awesome. But when it comes to social well-being, it's not just one person. So if you just have a good relationship with one friend or one lover, or that is not what I mean when I'm talking about social well-being. Social well-being is, do you feel like you have a village? And in my first book I wrote, um, Let Your Fears Make You Fears, I talked about an A-team. Do you have a mentor? Do you have someone you can consider a best or close friend? Do you have a group or a community you can go in that you feel like resonates with you? So if you don't have that, you will rate yourself closer to a one. If you're like, yep, I I got a mentor, I got a best friend, I got a community of people that think like me, um, then give yourself a 10. I probably would give myself, that might be the only area I might give myself a 10, maybe a 9.5 because I always like giving myself room to grow. But I feel like probably in the last two years, but not before that, I've cultivated healthy relationship with my family, healthy relationship with friends, healthy risk. And again, not perfect. I've had some falling outs too with families, with friendships, with um, in different communities where there might be alignment and then not alignment. So it's not about being perfect. It's just personal. Do you feel with your family, with social groups, with one-on-one romantic relationships? Do you feel like you have healthy? If not, closer to a one. If so, closer to a 10. And then the last area is financial well-being. How do you feel about your finances? I'm telling you, I remember I got my um, wallet sold and my credit went down to 300. And I was like, what the heck? I've always been very responsible, only spending money that I had, not blowing up credit cards. But here I was at 300. Now, it took me a long time to get above 800, but I got there and it felt really good. And coming from a family that didn't have much and, you know, we lived off the helping hand and we I drank powdered milk when I was younger. And, you know, before we got our house we live in now, which is a nice size, we were living in a trailer and It was humble beginnings, but we were very happy. I enjoyed our trailer. I actually still, we still have the trailer and I still um, live in it when I go home. But um, it was very humble beginnings and I learned how to live with just a little. And now financial well-being for me is having what you feel like you need, not compared to me, not compared to anybody else. Do you feel like you have the finances that you need to live the lifestyle that you want to live? There was a time in my life, like maybe two years ago, when I'd give myself a 10. And right now, I probably give myself a seven or an eight because there's a lot of things that I want to do, a lot of people I want to help, and I don't have the capacity right now. And so depending on your goals, you could be there, you could be not, but it's not about a certain amount. It's about do you have If you have, if you're a 10, if you have everything you need to give to every cause and do everything you want to do, give yourself a 10. If you're like, I don't even have nothing, I don't even know how I'm going to get by the next day, you will give yourself closer to one. Again, you're just noting where you are. My hope is that as we go through these episodes of the Lifestyle Design Podcast, and as I share more and more with you, that these numbers, wherever they are, my hope is they start to improve just by your awareness, just by you having clarity of like what each area of well-being is and deciding which one you want to work on. So I'm going to give you one little piece of homework. Pick one area. I invite you to pick the lowest area, but you can pick whatever area you want. Pick one area that you want to work on for the next month, for the month of April. I don't know when this podcast is going to come out, but you can even do for the next 30 days. Just one area every 30 days. And what do you want to do to get that area just to the next level? So if you gave yourself a six, what can you do to get it to a seven? So pick one area and I invite you every 30 days, pick another area and just go up one notch. You don't have to make a night and you don't have to go from like a two to an eight or, you know, anything like that, but just pick one area. And I really do believe this starts to give you an idea of how you can design your life and take your life to the next level. But it starts with with awareness and acknowledgement and clarity about where you are. And I'm so excited and so excited about this new uh, adventure for myself. I'm really excited because it took me two years to really 
organize um, what I was experiencing in my life and what I was noticing when it comes to my own well-being. As I got clear on like, these are the different areas that I need to focus on to be well, now I'm able to share that with you. So I hope you enjoy um, the Lifestyle Design Podcast. I hope you enjoy these solo episodes. I hope you enjoy the guests. And if you do, please, please, please rate and review. It would mean a lot to me because I do want to grow to the next level. I do want this podcast to reach and impact as many people as possible. And when you share your feedback, even ways that I can improve, please email me, Koya at KoyaWeb.com. Give me your feedback and how I can improve and I will read every single email or you can send me a DM on social media and I read those as well because my goal is just to help the world be a healthier place to live. And that starts with me and you. So thank you so much for tapping in. Until next time, love yourself, love others, and love the world. One day at a time, one breath at a time. Peace and love.